I'm also thankful for y'all's vinyl shop as well. Oh. But and, and, and you know, like it's crazy too how popular that has gotten. Oh yeah. Like whenever I first you know started shopping there and buying vinyl like it wasn't that big at the time like i was just a music geek and i loved collecting all forms of music dude i have eight tracks i have cassettes i got cds vinyl you name it but now it's just exploded and i seen some report a few weeks ago where vinyl has outsold cds for the first time and i forget how many years it's been that's wild it's Walmart's vinyl section is bigger than their CD section. Yeah. This gone CDs are the thing I think too, what I always thought was cool about records growing up from that, um, it's a physical piece of in front of you that when you you turn on you that vinyl, listen to the album, you got that you can look at all the artwork mm-hmm. on it and open it up inside. You can't do that much to a CD. No. It's just different. The different vibe, you know, you have a big cup of coffee, man, and yeah. and you take in that experience. And you'll have buddies that you listen to music with that's and they'll like, Hey, I'm gonna share this record to you. I love that. And yeah. they'll share that music to you, you know. One of my favorite things about used vinyl, and, and you know, every collector is different. I know a lot of collectors don't like this, but I love when people have written on them. And I know that that decreases the value tremendously. But, you know, sometimes, like, you just you see a name or you see some phrase or whatever that they've written on there, and you just start wondering, like, who wrote that? When did they write it? How many pairs yes, of hands that's... did it go through to end up with me? Yeah. You know, it's, it's wild to think about, man, because especially like with, you know, original used vinyl, if you get, like, an original Bob Dylan, you know, like that was this from the '60s, and here, fifty something years later, it's still around, and it's it's still here. Like CDs, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know how good a condition that they're going to be in fifty years yeah. from now, especially if they're used. I've seen, uh, you know, articles about that where it's like, yeah, CDs and DVDs and <clears throat> Blu-rays, like they have such a, you know, like shorter shelf life than than albums in terms of like, even if you don't do anything, keep them in the case out of the sunlight, you know, normal temperatures, like, they will, that will degrade in, you know, so many decades or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, wow. you get a it little a while, scratch but, on yeah. a CD and it gives. <laughs> I, I've seen records, man, that looks, I mean, like drug up down the four lane, man, and they'll yeah. play, you know. Dust them off or something. Then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I hear that bacon sizzling, cracking. I love that. It's, it's, it's yeah. more human. Like, yeah. you know, it's. I, I, well, I also like how you brought up the point of like, you know, how it's an experience. See, whenever you download a song, you just see the album art. But whenever you get a, a record that somebody has really put some time into, like some bands yes. just released it with a little bit of whatever. But you had like, you know, Cheech and Chong's Big Bamboo that yeah. had the big paper inside of it. <laughs> or you, you got these, uh, you know, an album like, you know, the Fillmore, Allman Brothers, yeah. w- with all the information on and it has the pictures and stuff like that i mean like it's like you're reading a book while you're listening to the album it's such it's such a more meaningful experience and also you could just tell how serious people took albums back then it wasn't about a hit single it wasn't about you know whatever commercial success they were trying to find at the time like they were trying to make a record one that you had to listen to from front to back. Yeah, in that order. Like, they, that was their vision. And, um, like, it wasn't just a collection of songs. It was, like, oh, there's I a mean, point to it. Big right? Dark Side of the Moon. I mean, yeah. come on, Pink Floyd. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> this, like, this is cool. Yeah. The, oh, my, my, I can't talk my wife into letting me do that at the house, but somehow I talked my boss into it. So a big shout out to Adam oh, Gearhart for I'm that. Still, I have posters in my house I, and stuff. I mean, I'm still old school and the... Uh, a lot of my guitar videos I put on Facebook and stuff, I you can see behind me all my cool posters. I, I just yeah. don't outgrow that, man. I love it. But it's it, cool. It, yeah, man, it's you know, your mind just rattles though. And you're like, how like how did David Lee Roth think of that album cover? You know, it's <laughs> yeah. just it's and wild. It's about weird cats. It's just <laughs> I mean, the Joe Cocker <laughs> one, man, that's cool. 